Welcome to the Extraordinary Acts for Others podcast, brought to you by our extraordinary friends here at Freedom's Ring. We are so excited to be able to celebrate extraordinary goodness being done right here in our extraordinary country by some truly extraordinary people. Extraordinary country by some truly extraordinary people. It is our sincere hope that we will excite your spirit, and after listening to today's podcast, that you'll go out ready and excited to do your own extraordinary acts for others in your community. Are you ready? Let's get excited. Yes, I am so excited today. Thank you for joining us for our second show. We have a really exciting, extraordinary guest. She is Marla Batista, a military spouse who co-founded the Batista Project with her husband as a way to give back and do extraordinary acts for others for the homeless in their community. This is a path from Marla's own experience of homelessness. You'll love the spirit that she brings today. And following Marla, we have two spirited stories that will be sure to excite your spirit and our Extraordinary Acts for Others Challenge of the Week. But first, we start off with the three things to know about Freedom's Ring. First, we want you to know that we're all about ordinary service with extra spirit. That's how you get Extraordinary Acts for Others. Ordinary service with extra spirit. It's that heart behind the service that matters and makes it extraordinary. Second, we're starting our Hard Work of Freedom Tour this year. It's our first ever tour. We're doing it from Military 10th through Independence Day, 4th of July. So between those days, we're going to hit about 20 cities doing service projects in them. So we invite you to go to freedomsringusa.org to learn more about our Hard Work of Freedom Tour. And finally, we invite you to become a friend, to enter the ring, become to enter the ring, become a friend, join our family, and do the extra. This is how you learn more about our organization and how you're able to serve with military spouses and families around your communities and how we unite in service. Service is one of the last things that really unites our communities. So we invite you to enter the ring with us, to enter the ring with us. And again, you can become a, a member. We call them friends. You can do that at freedomsringusa.org. And membership is always completely free. So come enter the ring. Now, here we go to our conversation with the extraordinary guest, Marla Batista. I'm excited to have Marla Batista and Marla Batista our co-founders of the Batista Project, which is a custom decor and apparel business that donates a percentage of its profits to the local homeless community. The Batista Project started in 2016 as custom t-shirt business, but soon blossomed into a bustling company creating custom products for not only personal business distribution as well. Over the years, the Batista Project has donated over 500 lunches and blessing bags to the homeless in their communities, and am I right? I saw on your social media page that you also are making pillows and blankets out of old military uniforms. Yes, so we do make um, old military uniforms. Yes, so we do make um, blankets and pillows out of old army uniforms that are no longer in service. They've been donated um, from the military community to us and we create blankets and pillows and we give them out to the homeless community. That's awesome. That's awesome. Why is homelessness the issue of the Batista Project? Um, there are two reasons for that. I actually, myself, Mark, actually homeless as a teenager at one point. And I remember um, eating at local churches and um, receiving um, hygiene items. That was something that really touched my heart. And I promised myself that if I ever came out of that situation, that I would give back to the community just as those people gave to me. Um, and so that's one of the reasons um, why I'm so passionate about giving back to the local community. Um, another issue is why I'm so passionate about giving back to the local community. Um, another issue is, um, I'm not sure about other posts, but a lot of army posts are located in areas that are not so um, financially secure. And so a lot of times um, within the gates, we these unless we go outside. And sometimes when we go outside, there's often a lot of poverty, um, a lot of homeless, homelessness, and a lot of other issues that face the community surrounding an army base. And so we took it upon ourselves to um, directly give back because they're helping us in so many ways. Um, we're using their resources to help our military community thrive. And so 
we should do the same for their community. That's fantastic. I really love that you focus on the local community. That's something that we try to do here too, is focus on that connection in the local community, because that's what seems to make our duty stations easier to easier to transition in. Um, A lot of people will move to a new place saying that they hate a duty station, but it's the people that they end up loving and liking that duty station. So that local connection is important. Exactly. You're right. Now, we try to cover companies in all stages of their business life, and you're a young company. Uh, Started in 2016. Why is it important for you already to be giving part of your profits as you're just starting out and starting to get a name for yourselves? Well, actually, our business started off as the Bautista Project, which was a mission. Um, We started off giving to the community. Um, We started off giving to the community. Um, And we later on realized that we need money to give back to the community. And so that's actually how the business derived was actually from the Bautista Project, the mission. Okay, wow. So you guys were a mission before you were even a business. I like that because you're in a business. I like that because for me, having a social mission for a business is kind of a necessity when I shop. Uh, And you started with that cause. You're not using a cause as marketing, but you are actually driven to do extraordinary acts for others. Yes, definitely. Now I see that the Batista Project Uplift. Where did that come from? Um, So Don't Trip Uplift is our motto. A lot of times we see people who have issues with how other people are living or what other people are doing. Um, But a lot of times they don't want to help. They don't want to change anything. You have to to fuss or worry about what other people are doing. What you need to do is help uplift them. You should definitely try to do what's best for everyone, Um, no matter how you feel about what their situation is or how they got into the situation. I really like the non-judgmental spirit in that explanation. Non-judgmental spirit in that explanation there, and also that there's a challenge in it to act, to not just be a bystander, but to act to actively uplift someone. So, when you uplift the homeless population in your community, are you working with other nonprofit organizations, or are you serving the population by, or are you serving the population by just going out and finding people who you've who you find on your own? We actually go directly into the community ourselves. Um, we do partner with organizations um, every now and then. Our current mission um, with making the blankets and the pillows from the AC, this is actually um, a children's home here in Jefferson County. So that mission is specific um, towards that home right now. But we usually directly go out into the streets. Um, we make sack lunches and blessing bags, and we go and hand them directly that are in need. That's really great because they're in need. That's really great because it's it's speaking to who you are. I've followed you on social media or by doing some research um, for this. Got that you are a sense of or you are a person with a sense of mission, um, and to give back is beyond just a business with the mission mission, but it's a personal thing for you. Um, I see that you're a writer and you had written an article saying that you're an empowered woman defined by resilience and selfless service. Why is selfless service such an important piece of your identity? Selfless service um, is, is important to me because I do better and to thrive in society. And for me, doing something without expecting something in return is what helps us all thrive. If I know that you're here to help me and you don't want anything from it, I will feel so much better about what you're doing for me and I will be able to, be able to positively pass that message on to someone else. I want everyone who our company is, is reaching or is touching to go out and say, hey, you know what? These people helped me. They didn't want anything from me. I'm not asking you to sit through a program. I'm not asking you to um, give anything you to um, give anything back to us. What I am asking you to get into a better situation, you pay it forward. Oh, that's phenomenal. Where does that deep sense of service come from, though? I was homeless, and as a teenager, I ate at a lot of um, local churches, and I to people like me. 
Um, I spent my time at shelters, local um, domestic violence shelters, victims assistance um, centers. And I realized that, you know, I had nothing to offer these people. They were helping because they wanted to help better the lives, to help better the lives of myself and other people with nothing in return. They weren't going to receive anything physically from me. And when I saw that day after day, night after night, these people just giving back to the community and they were just happy to do so. They were just happy to see someone, just happy to see someone benefiting from what they had to offer. Um, and for me, that was just so mind blowing. That was such a touching experience for me. Um, and I didn't like going through that experience, but I'm glad that I did. I would have never known how important it was to give back. There is a lot of gratitude in that sentiment right there. Like a real deep sense of appreciation for others who had helped uplift you. And now you're returning that goodness by paying it forward and becoming a blessing to others in your own community. I'm intrigued on how you got to gratitude, gratitude, because I think that there's kind of like a terror usually between when you are a beneficiary of something between having gratitude and entitlement and having that gratitude is so important. And I want to know how you got to that end and got to gratitude rather than being entitled to being being the recipient. You know, a lot of times it just depends on where you come from, your background um, and how open you are to to receiving and to giving, you know, because if you've never uttered the kindness of your heart, it's really hard for you to be grateful and to understand why someone else would do that. And you're a military spouse, and I see that you give back a lot to the military community. Being a part of this community is is such not only an honor, but it gives us a sense of, sense of patriotism. Our service members are creating acts of selfless service and good deeds every single day. And as a spouse, why can't I do the same? Who gives back, who empowers others, and who enlightens, you know, other spouses to do what's best for all of us. Do you like to volunteer? Where do you volunteer? I love to volunteer in any capacity um, that I'm needed here within the military gates. I'm actually an FRG leader here, um, here, um, on post, I am the president of the North Country Spouses Club, and I'm actually a, a creative writing instructor for the WTB as well. That's extraordinary right there. That's what we like to focus on every time that people are volunteering, that they're doing an extraordinary act for others. People are volunteering, that they're doing an extraordinary act for others. And just your involvement by serving and volunteering, that is what makes the military community so extraordinary. Um, but that service comes at a cost of time. How do you find time? Or better yet, why are you willing to give your time for this? It's the love I have for the the service. The love I have for the service members, um, that makes me feel good. Just knowing that I'm helping them help our country is what keeps me going. Do you ever volunteer outside of the base gates? I do. I actually volunteer outside of the gates. Eight. I go, uh, my husband and I, we like to volunteer at um, the Watertown Urban Mission. We like to help out there um, and in other parts of the community as well. Now you're at a temporary duty station in a community that you didn't know prior to getting um, PCL community shaped your view of that local area. For me, um, personally, it's, it's a really hard life here. Um, the weather is is really harsh here in the winter times and for people who don't have a lot of money um it can be a really hard place to live i mean a lot of poverty here um and you know i can imagine you know being homeless here at all um and just seeing them just it it hurts my heart to know that these people are here struggling and the least I can do is, you know, provide a meal or buy them a meal or buy them, you know, some, some gloves or some, or a hat, you know, to wear through, throughout the winter. Um, it definitely has touched my husband and myself to want to give back more um, here in, the, in our local community. 
Do you have a favorite moment of impact from the extraordinary acts that, the extraordinary acts that you do through your volunteering and service? My husband and I and our children, we made sack lunches and we went down to Syracuse to hand them out to the local homeless community there. Um, and I was walking down the street and I saw a guy and he said, I knew you before. And he kept insisting that he knew me. And I was just like, no, I don't think so. And I kind of was, I was kind of weirded out. I'm not going to lie because he kept, he kept insisting but then later, you know, I started to meditate and just think to myself, and I was insisting. But then later, you know, I started to meditate and just think to myself, and I remember that, um, going off a of religious standpoint, um, that sometimes people can see God in you, and when they do, they will see you, um, saw, and he believed that he knew me and not, not that he personally knew me physically, that he knew of me. He knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. And to me, that was like the greatest moment um, that I've had because I felt had, because I felt like I've made a difference, even though he didn't personally know who I was, he knew people like me. And that made me feel good. He knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. And so I touched him. And that was really important. That's an amazing story. And it's regularly served with your family? Yes. Um, I want to, my husband and I, we want to make sure that our kids know that, one, everyone in the world is different. Uh, we all come from different backgrounds and just because someone looks different from you or lives different from you is different. Uh, we all come from different backgrounds and just because someone looks different from you or lives different from you, you, you don't shun them. You don't separate yourself from them. We want our kids to know that it's okay to be friends with anyone you want. Um, and these people deserve to have friends too. These people having our children and we've brought our children out there for years and having them see us and see that, Hey, mommy and daddy are going out here. They're talking to these people. They're helping these people. We are directly teaching our kids to do the same thing. And that's, that's really important for our family. Yes. I love that so much. Yes. I love that so much because so much of parenting is that modeling and, and inviting our kids to participate with us. Um, a lot of times that's an extra step that you have to do. But once you invite kids, they'd love to be helpers. And I'm assuming here, but you have a vision for your kids. And, and I'm assuming here, but you have a vision for your kids. And is that part of the lifelong dream of the Batista Project? I believe that they will carry on our long after we're gone. Um, just because this is something that we're instilling in them. This is something that gives our family a sense of pride unity, and I believe that they will take that on and carry that um, with them as they become adults. I love what you just said there because it is so important. Like What we believe here at Freedom's Ring, that service is patriotic. And how do you teach that value in your house? Because taking care of others is a, it's a way of supporting our country. Um, we strengthen our service members by supporting them. Um, we strengthen our nation by supporting it. So all of that ties into patriotism. Um, and I want them to know that this is supporting it. So all of that ties into patriotism. Um, and I want them to know that this is a part of this is a part of our country. You're a part of our country. You are a patriot. We're all patriots. Um, even though I may not wear the uniform, my husband does. And me supporting my this unit, um, it just it just shows and proves that you know together we're stronger and we all need each other. And when a service member is down, um, that hurts us. That hurts all of us. And when the service member is doing well and thriving and doing great. That helps our country. That helps our country. You know, if our service members are great, our country is great. Um, and it's up to us to support them in any way that we can. And I definitely want my children to know and anyone else listening that 
patriotism is a form of service. We can all be of service service. We can all be of service to each other. And if we do so, it would help strengthen our country. It would help strengthen every single individual in our nation. Yes, yes, yes. I love what you just said there. Taking care of others is the way that we support our country. Because that is our pitch every day. Is Every day is every extraordinary acts for others makes our country and our communities even more extraordinary. And what we find here is that we see it at the most local level. That that one-to-one interaction is what's really important in building up that community. Absolutely. Do you have people influence your sense of service? I do. I have a lot of friends um, in this community that do the same thing that I do that uplift the community. A lot of um, military spouses that I know that are very strong and powerful. Um, I have lots of friends that books and they go out into the community and they speak to people. Um, They help strengthen other military spouses. I have a friend, Sherry Eifler, who just recently released a Bible study and she is helping strengthen our community um, by religion, by faith. Um, and that I have um, a friend and mentor, her name is Keisha Cole. She was actually um, a military spouse of the year for Armed Forces Insurance. And she is one of my biggest mentors um, and greatest friends. She actually has helped so many military spouses um, become entrepreneurs. Um, there's so many people that I could name. I can go down the list of all the people that has helped our community grow and to become stronger. How about any quotes that inspire your service? Do you have anything that you can share with our listeners about any quotes that you have? Mm, mm, I have a few different quotes that I love. Um, and since we are on our special holiday break, um, one of my quotes that I really love from him um, is actually about um, injustice um, in America and a lot of America and a lot of a lot of issues that we're facing right now kind of relate to that. So that quote, justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, and that's one of my favorite quotes, um, just because he was a person of selfless service um, and he ultimately gave his um, and he ultimately gave his life um, for what he believed in and it helped our country um, it hurts that he he had to die the way that he did um, but it was it was something that used to evolve, I guess you can evolve, I guess you can say, um, to get to the place that we are today. And today he's revered as, as a man of honor, a man of selfless service. And, you know, he paid the ultimate price for it. And so that's very important to remember. Well, and I love how they have really made Martin Luther King reflection on his legacy. It's something that we can do today to honor it. Um, as that's becoming more and more in the past, that we now have a sense to carry that legacy forward and not just let it stop with what he did, but in our own actions. So that's a great way to inspire further justice in our country. Yes, definitely. As we wrap up here, can you tell us any more about the lifelong dreams you have with the Batista Project? Our ultimate goal at the Batista Project is to actually open reintegration shelters, not only for the veterans, but also for the for the veterans, but also for the homeless community, the civilian homeless community as well. Um, that's one of the the issues that plague us as a nation is homelessness, whether it be through military veterans or through civilians. And so ultimately, we want to open a place. There are plenty of shelters out there, um, but there are not enough. There are not enough, and there are not enough working shelters. Um, there are a lot of places you can go and stay for, you know, two days, 72 hours. There's veteran homes, um, which have a couple of years wait list. to create shelters where people with their families can go stay, where we'll help them um, reintegrate back into society by way of employment and financial stability. Um, 
And I think that's very important. And so ultimately, that's our goal. That's our final mission is to, that's our final mission is to, to open those shelters. I think you just brought up a good point that we need to stick on for a minute. And that's the idea that these issues are massive and they need all hands on deck. That I think a lot of people see nonprofits or sizes and say, there's already a lot of people in that space. There's already a lot of food drives. There's already a lot of um, shelters or feeding the poor. But really, the thing is, the issue is just that big that there's not enough services being done right now to step up and say, hey, we can do a little bit more. We could put our extra into this. And I was just wondering about your response to that. Yes, definitely. Um, we we need more hands on deck in our country. Um, there are so many um, food drives, blood missions happening, but it's still not enough. We don't have enough food for the people in our nation. We don't have enough shelter for the people in our nation. We don't have enough clothes for the children who are leaving bad situations. Um, trying to get to a better place. We need to fill that void um, it's for the children who are leaving bad situations, um, trying to get to a better place. We need to fill that void. Um, and we're helping to do that, all of us as a community. There will never be enough until everyone pitches in and gives back to our nation. The service that you are doing through the Batista Project is definitely a very good, great example of extraordinary acts for others and what makes you a really good extraordinary guest today so thank you for coming on and for sharing your story with us thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it i just love marla's extraordinary story it's certainly inspiring and i love that it comes from her experiences and has turned into the batista project giving back and they're such a young company and they have such a good heart behind their project so be sure to follow them. They're on Facebook and Instagram, The Batista Project, and continue to watch them grow and continue to watch them grow and watch that heart be the dif- differentiator for them for sure. Now it's time for the Spirited Stories of the Week. These extraordinary acts for others have so much spirit that we just had to share them with you. And as always, if you see any extraordinary acts for us, if you're on Twitter, Tag us at Freedoms Ring USA or use the hashtag Extraordinary Acts for Others so that we can have attention to the extraordinary goodness that you see in your life. Our first story comes from St. Louis, Missouri, where icy road conditions led to tough driving when they realized that one of the passengers from the car needed medical evaluation. They began to drive the woman to the hospital, but the icy roads were causing problems for their truck. That's when they decided to get out of the ambulance and walk, pushing the gurney a mile to the hospital so she can get evaluation. Walk, pushing the gurney a mile to the hospital so she can get evaluation. Next, we go to Houston, Texas, where local hero J.J. Watt continues to do extraordinary acts for others. While most schools around the country celebrate the 100th day, Houston celebrates the 90th. One student showed up in a homemade jersey with tape 99 on his shirt. That's when J.J. Watt saw the picture and loved the effort that he had to make a visit to a school to hand deliver him a new jersey. Now for the Extraordinary Acts for Others Challenge of the Week. The Bating Boxes to Homeless in Northern New York. Our challenge is to send them some of the hygiene products that they use to fill those boxes. Items can include travel-sized toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorants, soaps, shampoos, you name it, but do the travel size. You can send it to P.O. Box, toothbrushes, deodorants, soaps, shampoos, you name it, but do the travel size. You can send it to P.O. Box 1073, Fort Drum, New York, 13603. Well, thank you for listening today. If the Extraordinary X for Others podcast continues to excite your with your friends. We also are spreading the spirit online, so follow at Freedoms Ring USA on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Know that you are extraordinary and have extraordinary abilities to do extraordinary X for others. 
So we invite you to unite with us in service. Enter the ring, become a friend, join our family, do the extra. See you next week.